I am an informed activist living with HIV, and I have information to share with my community members about trending injustices aimed directly at people living with HIV and AIDS that for effectively just for long. So what is HIV criminalization? HIV criminalization is the use of one's HIV positive status in the criminal prosecution, either under HIV-specific criminal statutes that apply only to people living with HIV, or under general criminal statutes where charges or punishments are initiated or heightened solely because of the person's HIV positive status. That's the reality in over 30, in, in our, I'm going to say 35 states because I know since I've been doing this work, one state, Iowa, has actually, Iowa and Colorado have actually changed their, uh, reform their HIV laws. So with advocacy, we can do what we can't do alone, we can do together because we're talking about human rights violations. HIV is a medical condition. And it's not a crime, it's a crime criminalizing it. And to be clear, HIV does not have to be transmitted. These are not cases where HIV is being transmitted. These laws are carried out differently in each state. These laws are around non-disclosure of your HIV status. It becomes a he, sh he said, she said, and generally the person who's HIV negative seems to be more credible in the courts than people who are HIV positive. These laws are in direct conflict with the CDC recommendation that all people get tested and know your status because it drives people back from getting tested because of fear. These laws make people afraid to come forward for testing. These laws lay the total burden of the sexual health and the relationship in the hands of the person living with HIV. And it relieves the negative person of the responsibility of their own sexual health. So the, it's upon the, it leads to the blame upon the person who's, pos who's positive for um, consensual sex. It allows legal discrimination on the basis of HIV status. And in people of color, this is very important, People of color will disproportionately suffer the brunt of the HIV epidemic in the United States. HIV criminalization becomes a racial justice issue as well as a public health issue. HIV criminalization laws cover a broad range of behaviors. A lot of those behaviors can't even transmit HIV. But they cover biting and scratching, they may cover prostitution, even they may cover organ, do organ donation, needle exchange or needle sharing, to have consensual access without disclosing one's status to one's partner. Some of this criminalization, some of these, let me say this, these, a lot of these laws were made back, way back when this HIV, this epidemic is 35 years old. So some of these laws are 35 years old when we didn't know what HIV was. Today we know what it is. We're at the beginning of the end of AIDS. So what we're seeing now is this, this big trend on HIV sensationalism that's not merited. You know, and it kind of makes us backpedal, right? And our states that um, people have been prosecuted in, at least one prosecution in the last two years, and we're talking four years ago, the states that are yellow um, have specific statutes, but maybe haven't had any recent prosecutions, that those states will have the white triangle with the exclamation point in them. Those are states that if you, if you get um, charged with um, uh, HIV criminalization, you have to have, you'll also be charged with as a sex offender. You have to get sex offender on your driver's license, like Robert did. But here's a, a snapshot of what it looks like in the United States. It's the bigger snapshot when you look at it, what it's like in the world, because this is not just happening in the United States, but it's happening far too often, and if we don't push back, Right, and people with HIV, we will have all of our human rights and human dignity stripped from us as well um, for HIV criminalization in Pennsylvania. You can get a second degree felony, you can get a felony. Even if, even if you're a person who's, um, who's already serving life, you can still get another life sentence. I mean, if you die and come back, you gotta go right to jail. But to say that, um, that we actually have, we don't actually have HIV specific statutes, HIV specific laws, but we do have statutes that can allow sentence enhancement, particularly if you're already incarcerated. If you're already, that's what, that's what, this, what this petition's been about. 
because people who are in jail who are already incarcerated in Pennsylvania, um, they're trying to add some additional laws onto that that will uh, take away their rights to, um, to their own confidentiality. They will take away their rights to have to sign in order for somebody to, re to reveal their HIV status. And so PWN, we, we feel strongly that the existing laws in Pennsylvania need to be eliminated. Yes. Or at the very least, we need to, we need to have them reform to meet the current science. No gain. Um, PWN Philadelphia, along with the AIDS Law Project, has written a report, a white paper report, that you can find um, if you go to the AIDS Law Project website. If you go to PWN's website, it is called All Pain, No Gain, because we want to make sure that this landscape, that this trend ends here in Pennsylvania. Back away, back from, away from, from, from that impossible, what people say is impossible, I see possibility.